Hi everyone, um, it's Elisa from Dragon Stitches here on this very snowy morning of March 2nd. We got dumped with a lot of snow last night. Um, it's going to be fun getting to school today. But I walk, so nothing preventing me from going to school. Um, I don't actually have any work done yet on anything since my last video so I'm not this isn't really about that um, there's a few things I need to talk about the first is um, secret stitcher so we drew names on weekday on February 29th and that was fine Dante has decided to wake up I thought I would have a few more minutes <laughs> with him sleeping in the back room um, He's like another baby, I'll tell you. So, we drew names on Leap Day, February 29th. And everyone got matched up. I'm really happy with my match. I. Sorry, Dante is trying to get into the trash can. Um, I drew the name of a fellow floss tuber. So, I'm really stoked about that. And. That is all I'm gonna say about that because I don't want to give anything away. But I've I've planned something really kind of cool. I hope. Anyway, so um, enough with the ums. Names were drawn pretty smoothly. We ended up with 42 people, which is great, fantastic, and everyone got their names. And people are shopping. There's still a few little. Well, there are still a few questions that keep coming up that I'm going to try to answer here uh, for simplicity's sake. Everything's buzzing right now. Anyway, okay. So, I'm easily distracted this morning. I don't know why. I was up at like 4 o'clock this morning when the dog was barking at the door for no reason. <sighs> so, anyway. A little bit spacey. Gonna try to pull through. Frequently asked questions for Secret Searcher. The first one is people are having some confusion about the wish list. On Elster, you can go and choose things by putting in a link or just a text of what you would like. A lot of these links go directly to stores, online stores. And some people are still under the impression that they have to stick with the wish list, and that is not the case. The wish list should be viewed exclusively as a inspiration, a list of, of ideas basically. Things that this person could use in their life to make their stitching go easier. Or something they've always wanted. Or it gives you an idea of their aesthetic. If someone puts on their wish list a bunch of primitives and Quakers and, you know, Lizzie Cates and all that, you're not going to go buy them a Hade. I mean, they might like a Hade, but their, their, you know, their, their interest seems to say otherwise. Um, it, it's just to give you an idea of the other person's likes and tastes because cross stitch runs the gamut when it comes to tastes um, you know my mother she cross stitches and she really likes primitives and very simple designs you know clean lines very simple designs very little stitching and, and that's what she enjoys. I, you know, I've done more of like this stuff, which is in like a medium size, mostly full, full coverage. I mean, the middle is, you know, there's cutouts and stuff, but, um, and that's what I like. I also like little primitives sometimes. They're fun. And I've seen a cute Quakers that I want 
and things like that. So you definitely want to get something that they're going to want to use, which is where the wish list comes in. Um, so when you look at the wish list, you can definitely pick off of it. Don't don't think that that's a bad thing or a wrong thing to do. Someone put it on their wish list because obviously they want it, so they will be so to get it. So if you really can't think of anything else, shop off the wish list, no problem. The other question I seem to be getting is, do you have to use the exact link that they provide for the shopping? No, I don't know. You can go find it somewhere cheaper and send it to them there. You can go find it locally and ship it to them. You do not need to use that exact provider or online shop that they have linked to. Which leads me to another question. The Some people may put things that are way over the $30 suggested price in their wish list. <coughs> they are free to do that. I can't stop them from doing that. It just use that as their inspire as inspiration. Uh, if they put a big kit like um, maybe like a Hade kit. Have you seen the material packs for Hades? They're ridiculous. Excuse me, I'm just. Well, I'm drinking cough first thing in the morning. What do I expect? So, you could always give them a gift certificate towards it. You know, you could say, I, I saw you were working towards getting this. Here's so and so to put towards that wonderful endeavor. And leave it at that. And that's perfectly fine too. Completely digital gifts that you don't actually have to send physically are completely acceptable too. I mean, for the suggested gift price of $30 US, you could easily get two, or even if there's a sale, three hate pattern for that. And that's a huge gift right there, just to get the pattern for a piece. So there are options. If you don't, I, I don't, I know most of the people who participate are in the US. A few in Canada, UK, and Australia, and one from Hungary and one from Denmark. So, really cool. I don't think the people who are in the smaller countries got matched with people in the same country, unfortunately. Um, I went and did a cursory look at the, the draw names just to make sure that people were had a match, everyone had a, an actual match, that nothing had gone wrong. And so if you're sending to someone in a different country, most definitely consider shopping online using a vendor in that country. Like if you're sending something to someone in the UK, there is, I'm going to forget the name, is it so-and-so? No. Yeah, I think it was, no, so-and-so, they're the ones who do the millennium frame, right? Sorry, I just had to deal with a few things, but I am back now. So, as I was saying, yes, if you are shipping internationally, please do go and find the website of a local or in their country Yay. store. Sorry, that's whiny Dante. Yes, I know. You're relegated to that end of the couch. He can only sleep. He can only be on the lounge end of the couch, not next to me here because I have stuff here. So he's whining at me about it. He is such a drama queen. Yes, I know. Enough. Um. So yeah. Also, I went to look at it, and I can't really fi find it, figure out what I was thinking before that there was a UK site that did Frosted Pumpkin kits. The only one I can find that they, they would do thread packs, they wouldn't actually get the kit with the pattern. Hush puppy. They wouldn't actually do the, the kit with the pattern. 
they were just basically putting together thread packs for it. It's uh, called the Home Makery. So if you have someone in the UK, you might want to look at that site because it looks like it has a lot of nice stuff. Uh, but always ask them. I mean, you could always ask, you can send anonymous questions to the uh, to your your giftee and they will answer them. So or anonymous, you can just send them an anonymous message. So do so if you need to. Really, your life is not that bad. <sighs> okay, so that is what um, is going on with Super Sister. And it looks like a lot of fun, and it's going to be a lot of fun to see when people start receiving their gifts and posting them about them. So that'll be great. I'm looking forward to it. The other thing I was going to say is I'm thinking about doing a very personal uh, blog post about some of the crap that's going on in my life right now, a separate of my. And I know I usually include something about my life in most posts, but I don't want to really bring my floss two videos down with the. It's not going to be a very fun thing to talk about. It's mainly for myself. I don't really care if anyone watches it. Um, you can. If you want to learn a few more things about me, I'm going to be sharing things in it that are probably a little TMI. Um, just about my personal life and how I, I live my Okay. Life. So I finally had to just ask Andrew to take Dante out because his whining was not stopping. So... What was I? Yes, I'm going to be doing a personal vlog. You're going to be able to watch it if you want. Go watch it if you want. If you don't want, I don't really care. But I'm going to be completely open in it. Because, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm, it's, it's, a, this, this talking thing that I'm doing, it has been very helpful to me to, verbalize the way I'm feeling it's part of a therapy that I've been learning and it's it's really helpful to me and since I can't afford actual therapy I might as well do my own therapy so therapeutic reasons other reasons if you watch it cool if you don't watch it that's cool too so yeah that's coming down the pipeline eventually probably after next week things are gonna come to a head next week and We'll see how they go, go first before I... Oh, and all of a sudden my nose is running. Let me just get a little bit of tissue here. Sorry about that, guys. Uncensored. You blow my nose. Um, okay, and that is that. Uh, one more thing. Actually, last thing I'm going to be doing is a new tag. There's a new tag out there. Oh, it is... Sorry. Holy Andrew. <laughs> Sorry, inside joke. Um, I deserve that. So, what am I doing to find? So, the tag I am doing is the for reals though tag, um, which I love the name for reals though. And it is by Adele McNaughton. Hi, Adele. I recently came across her floss tube. There's so many floss tubes out there that I, I know there's some I'm missing and not subscribed to. So um, I find new ones all the time. She's hilarious. Oh, my gosh. I love her. And so I'm going to do her tag. And it's ten questions. Very interesting questions. Uh, so thank you, Adele, for this wonderful tag. So all of her questions start, of course, with, for reals, though. So number one, for reals, though, what level of stitcher do you consider yourself to be? I am comfortably an intermediate stitcher. I have learned the basics of stitches always lying the same way. Um very tidy backs, you know, I do loop start, I do, you know, things to make it 
tidy, quick, easy to, you know, I know how to do the pin stitch, to do confetti, or to start um, a stitch with a pin stitch. There's, you know, I know a few tricks. I don't know things like parking. I don't know a lot of specialty stitches. I know how to do front knots, so there is that. I do know how to do front knots. And so yes, I would say I am an intermediate stitcher. I have the basics down pretty flat, pretty pat. I am comfortable, you know, just jumping into a project without really having to read the instructions. So I'm comfortably an intermediate stitcher, I would say. Oh, today is actually the first anniversary of finishing the Hogwarts crest. I finished it a year ago today and it yeah it's um, I'm really happy with it because it was my biggest uh, project that I had finished and I was sorry I just it was it was for my daughter's school so I had to look at it um, it was the biggest project I'd ever finished. Before that, I'd only finished small ones. But it's definitely not my only finish now. So I've done a lot more since then. Uh, I'm really happy with how that one turned out, though. I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. Although I think I've improved my stitching even since then. So I'm comfortably intermediate. I also know a little bit of beading. So that also pushes me up into the intermediate as well. So number two, for reals though, how many whips and UFOs do you honestly have? This includes things you gave up on and threw out. I haven't ever thrown anything out. Um, I have them here. I have, um, this is my first ever big cross stitch project. I started when I was maybe 13 or 14 years old. And it was a Bucilla kit and it was this bird bath. Um, I don't know what it was called, but this is really kind of tattered now. See, that's what it would look like. Usilla, I don't know, it doesn't have a name on it. It just says called Bird, Bird Bath, designed by Barbara Bath. 14 count, yeah. Really nice. I saw the charge for it. I've lost all the threads. And they're not DMC, so I don't know what I would do to even begin finishing this. So it is com it is most definitely a UFO. Um, yeah. We won't go into the actual stitching quality there. Uh, that's a UFO. This one that I found a little while ago when I started tried to get back into stitching. This is the Panther and Cub. Oh, I found, by the way, I found the... Where is it? I found the pattern for this, and I found a place where I can get it digitally. So I'm hoping I'll be able to. See, okay, I'm gonna get a picture for you. So this is what it's gonna look like. See, pretty. See, Black Panther and Cub by Custom Crafts, as you can see. And I found somewhere to get a digital download pattern, which makes me very happy. It was only about ten dollars too. Nine ninety nine US. Well, look at that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to put some money aside for that soon because this I have all the threads for it. Well, most of them. I've used some for other projects, but I have most of the threads for this. I could just pick this up and go. Uh, but I need the pattern. I don't have the pattern anymore. I believe I threw it out because I thought I had lost this and then I found this a few weeks ago. So, that's my other UFO that hasn't been touched since 2008, I believe. So, those, and I have also in here a little ornament kit. It was two Christmas ornaments in the shape of Christmas trees. One was a little a cat under the mistletoe and the other one was a little mouse on Hi. <laughs> He's all excited from being outside. Uh, one was a little 
mouse on a present. And it had all the cardboard to finish it and everything. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. Dante decided to start barking because he gets excited when he gets in from outside. So I went and found the ones I was just talking about, the ornaments. So this was the kit. It was a very old kit from like, oh gosh. Are you 80s or 90s? Ugh, it's there in Roman numerals, but I can't. Yeah. It doesn't say. There's no website on it, so that's how old it is. <laughs> you know. Um, so I won't show the back because that's the patterns. But yes, little ornament kit. Two Christmas ornaments. See? One little mouse on the gift, and then the cat and the mouse and the mistletoe so this one's done but I forgot to sandwich the um when I done it these are the first cross stitches I did like this is how old this is this is uh, yeah something old um <laughs> so I did these when I was okay now there's a confrontation can we not please have doggy kitty deathmatch while I'm trying to do a Flossy video? Um, so yes, but you see there's two pieces. So there's one piece of cardboard that this is wrapped on, and then it's sandwiched with sandwiched with the lace, which I didn't do very well because it didn't line up right there, as you can see. And in between, you were supposed to put this lovely ribbon that comes with it. Now I have ribbon. I didn't know I have ribbon. Okay, never mind. Um, easily distracted again. And so I can't even use those ornament. I might be able to put something through the lace here or something and make it. I should really put this on my tree eventually. Anyway, so then I had the other one. I, I didn't realize I had it this completed, although my stitches are atrocious. Um, there's actually enough Ada in here. I could do another couple of them. Hmm. Maybe. Anyway, um, so this, and you can see there's a, there's a bunch of thread on the back. This was um, almost finished. All I had left to do is I think there's some little green berries in French knots up here, and I could not figure out French knots when I was like 12. So yeah, I might just finish this one up and actually make it an ornament, although I could probably restitch it pretty quickly and make it actually look better because I am seeing all of the wrong way stitches and I don't like it. So, I don't know. Something might happen with those. They might not. There. We left those right now. Oh, this is an almost FFO. This is an FFO. But it's not an FFO. It doesn't have the darn hangy ribbon. So, well, my mom gave those to me when I started getting back into she had saved everything. Um, yeah, so that's, those are my UFOs. My other whips right now, so I have what, three, three UFOs. My other whips right now, let me make sure I get everything back together. Um, I have the Doctor, the Fifth Doctor, 3D, which is the one I'm working on now. You guys have seen the most recent work I've done on that one. Uh, the next one is, oh, I technically do have another UFO that's never going to be finished. It was the Storytime sampler that I had done on the request, recommended storm colored fabric, and it just did not look right for me. It did not look, the colors did not pop enough, so that's a probably permanent UFO. I can't really get rid of it, though. It's just it's really pretty, but, you know, I'm never going to finish it. Um, whips, yes, I have the doctor, I have the doctor, I have my Stitching Out Stigma, um, piece that I made myself, that I designed myself, I have doctor, Stitching Out Stigma, Sailor Moon, which I need to get work on, I need to get stitches in Sailor Moon, okay, that sounded bad, um, That one, that one, that one. 
and I have the when I restarted the um, story time sampler, which has become the lost whip. I still haven't managed to find it, and every few weeks I go on a search of all my stuff, and I just can't seem to find it. I remember having a moment where I put, had it in my hand, and I put it somewhere for safekeeping, and I made it too safe for like keeping it safe for me. It's here somewhere. It has to be. It has to be here somewhere. I'll be so upset if it's not. Anyway, because I have done a lot of decluttering lately, but I really, really think I would not have, have gotten rid of it. It has to be here somewhere. It's under something or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll find it eventually. Sorry, I have an itch on my calf, which is why I'm leaning in like this. Um, that can't be all my whips. Yeah, I think it is. Doctor, Stitching Out Sigma. Sailor Moon and Joy Time Stamp, but I don't have as many as I thought I did. That's actually pretty good. I like that. It's good. I like it. Um, so, yeah. I'm thinking, no, I have to have more than that. I feel like I have more than that. Maybe I just have in my head that I want to have more I need to view. <laughs> Maybe that's it. <laughs> um, <coughs> Where are my questions? Go back to questions. So that was question two. We're on to question three. For reals though, are you en e enabled easily? If I had more money to spend, I would be very easily enabled. I'm being enabled in my mind. I have definitely written down a lot of things that I have seen other people do that I have, I need to do. I desperately need to do. So I'm using the X Stitch app, the Cross Stitch app, and to really um, put together the, the using the journaling to really set up my future projects. So definitely fun times. Definitely enabled. For reals though, do you suffer from SAD, Stitcher's Attention Deficit Disorder? Yes. Uh, if I have to concentrate on one stitch for too long, I get bored with it and it becomes a chore. So I like being able to switch it up. I like being able to do smaller things first or smaller things in between bigger things or putting away a bigger thing and doing a smaller thing so I'm able to finish something like I've been doing with some of the small ornaments and small patterns that I've been making. I love doing that because it gives me a chance to finish something and have a finish and feel accomplished and then go back to my big one. Because I know when I get a big finish, like when I'm going to get the doll finish, it's going to be over the moon. So yes, I do do have a bit of Stitcher's Attention Deficit Disorder. Have you ever finished a full cover project, example, hay, tilt and crafts, etc.? I feel like there should have been a for reals though, but there wasn't. For reals though, have you ever finished a full coverage project? Example, hey, tilting crafts, etc. If, if your answer was no, how far have you gone? I haven't. I haven't even started one of those yet. For reasons which is going to be in an answer. For now. I do have one in the works. I'm going to. It's the full cover piece I'm doing for the my part of the Stitching George Washington. So that's going to be a full covered piece. So, but there's only like nine colors in it. So, uh, number six for reals though. Do you enjoy confetti? Lots of stitches in different colors. Kind of got to deal with confetti when I was working on the story time sampler because the story time sampler has a lot of. Uh, it's a very small design, so a lot of things are just one stitch of this color, one stitch of this color, a couple of stitches of this color over here, a couple of stitches. It was like some of those blocks have 10 or 12 colors, and I'm like, that's ridiculous for such a small design. But I get it. So basically, I 
Um, yes, I don't mind confetti now that I've learned the pin stitch because it makes it so much easier if it's on like a small, um, if it's on a small pattern and you know you only have one or two stitches all by itself pin stitch makes this stuff a breeze so I don't really mind it too much of course I haven't dealt with confetti in a big aid type situation so we will see seven for reals though how many finishes do you have this year so far and how does this compare to your whip UFO number from question two I have one small finish so far and I'm okay with that and my whips, I have four currently in one rotation. Well, kind of rotation. I'm only concentrating on the one right now, but I'm okay with that. For reals though, number eight. For reals though, are you bothered by your answer in the last question? Would you rather have a smaller or larger number? I'm not. I'm kind of okay with that. I have one small finish so far this year. I think that's great. I'm really want to put some big work into my bigger pieces, mediums, well, okay, they're not big pieces compared to some people's, but they're big pieces for me. So, and especially with the time I, I don't get to stitch, it, 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 I haven't been making a ton of progress, but I make some. So I'm happy with the progress I'm making, especially with all, everything else I have going on right now. Oh, number nine. For reals, though, do you have any perhaps embarrassing dirty little stitchy secrets? I do. I have one little dirty little stitchy secret. I don't get hates and the hype surrounding them. Um, I am a little wary about certain things that the designer, not the, yeah, the, the chart, the chart designer of Hade has said on some, or not have said directly, okay. There was a comment made on a Facebook group the other day about hate patterns and how they're created. And the comment was made not by the actual person who charts, by someone else saying that this person's process was computer aided, but that they did most of the charting by eye. And I'm doing the quotation marks, I'm actually quoting what they're saying. Um, everything else is, is conjecture or my own, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm putting my own words in there. But those were actually the words that they used. They, it's computer aided and she does it by eye. Now, she, but they specifically said they do, she does not use a pattern maker, a, a digital pattern maker, like a program. Now, in my probably really unpopular opinion, I mean, I've played with PC Stitch a few times. I've created a formula for creating pixel art to, you know, patterns pretty seamlessly. Uh, I've, you know, I played around with it. I'm by no means an expert, and this woman has been doing it for years. So, let me preface that with that. In my opinion of working with various in the digital art field right now when I'm doing my work for school, there is no way that this person is charting by I you know I don't even know what that means. And I don't feel like I'm there's a trend in Facebook where some Facebook groups have become little mini dictatorships. If you do not like what is being said in them and you speak up about that or you try to put a conflicting opinion across or you question something um, from those who are in charge of the group, you risk just getting booted. And or you risk getting, you know, chewed out. And I I don't like confrontation with people, so I try to avoid it as much as possible. But there are times when I have to really bite my tongue in some of these groups and not just, you know, spout my opinion on various things. And this was one of it. I really had to I really had to bite my tongue because I wanted to ask 
what exactly are you saying? What exactly is the process? Because then I, I figure they're going to come back and be like, why would you want to know the process? What are you trying to do? Copying their, you know, style? This person is a professional. They know what they're doing. And that's true. They run an extremely successful site where they sell many, many patterns. I've seen it. People buy dozens of patterns from these people and have hoarded them. I have seen it. And that's fine. We all stash stuff. That's fine. You are successful. I think that's great. I think there should be some more transparency in what, you know, they do to create these charts because saying that someone charts by eye almost means that they go in there and they <coughs> redraw the entire thing in you know in first you'd have to redraw the entire thing in pixels and then you would have to um, assign colors to each of those matching the colors of the pixels it's it would take months and months and months and months and months and months and months for one of these charts because they're so huge. And the supersized ones with max color, there's no way they're not using a pattern maker of some kind. It might not be a commercial pattern maker. It might be a pattern maker of their own design that leaves things to be a little bit more manually manipulated. I can see that. But there's no way that it's done by eye. Like, what does that even mean? I, ooh, I really held back because I don't really want to get kicked off of any Facebook groups. I don't want to be attacked, which is what people are doing <laughs> to people with unpopular opinions in these groups. And I just, I don't need that in my life right now. But I don't see the hype about Hades. I for one, want to see what the finished product is going to look like, and a lot of these are very ambiguous, extremely ambiguous, as to what they're actually going to look like when they're done. And some of them don't come out very well at all. Things People don't understand with, with things that are, are breaking down into pixels that you can see, and that means, you know, squares that you can actually see, it, it means that you lose definition, because there isn't if you if you have a very soft gradient, you ha you can't just have big blocks of color next to each other to create the gradient unless you have like 60 shades of that color, one only a teeny tiny little bit you know um, uh, darker than the other. In pixel art, we do things like dithering, which is a technique where you, you probably sometimes see it if you play video games on video game sprites. You take one color and you do a little bit of a solid color and then take another color next to it and put a solid color, but then you move some of the darker colors just pixel by pixel in a pattern into the dark uh, into the lighter colors so that you dither the pattern. You, you create little bits of it into the other color so that those colors, when they're pulled back, merge together. And you will see this technique in people who create their own patterns. Um, they draw their own patterns when they, it's, it's, I've told, I've had this rant before, but there is a huge difference between patterns that are actually created as patterns and patterns that were original artworks, otherwise, you, you know, transferred into a pattern through a pattern maker software completely different. In one, it's like painting by numbers. It's, it's, they put down the colors that you need and, the, you know, it's basically creating physical pixel art. And the other one, it makes it more of a, a painted effect. I'm sorry. Dante is deciding to snarkle himself for some reason. Quite attractive. And it just, it doesn't look the same. And some of them, if there are large parts that have these, like the very faint gradients, you'll have these kind of halo effects of the colors coming in, and it's not attractive to me. So, and on top of that, a lot of their patterns don't even have finished, you know, 
model stitches because they're so freaking huge you can never ask someone to hey can you model stitches for me and they'd be like yeah i get back to you in two years when i'm done that or you know it will cost you this much time for my hours to model stitches it's just not viable for them so i can see why they don't but man i just i can't which is why I'm, if I ever do a haid, I'm definitely sticking to ones that I have seen stitched so I know what to expect. Um, I have one, a Jasmine Beckett one. I believe the Jasmine Beckett one. It's one of her Dragonlings. Dragonlings. Dragonlings? It's the um, Frost Dragonling. It has the Aurora. I was gifted it. I was racked it. It was fantastic. I was so stoked. And... I, I've been watching this stitched on this, this one Facebook group I'm in, and someone is stitching it, and looks really decent. There's certain parts that I probably wouldn't like, but I, the, the, it actually does look really decent. So, I, this, you know, they do a great job creating these charts. But you can't predict what it's going to look like from a, a mock-up, which is what they offer. Because you can't, because there's, there's color differences in the thread to the colors that they have been, you know, chosen. And it, there's, it's just not, you can't know. So, because of that, it's just... I'm wary about buying my own hay patterns. And I mean, there's a couple that I, I kind of want, but I'm there's there's other full coverage um, people who do certain kind of the same thing. The other one I, I'm thinking of is Charting Creations. They do a lot of the silhouettes, the full black silhouettes, and they but they also sell actual other patterns as well. They don't do only the charted patterns or the charted artwork. And I'm really digging theirs too. So I don't know. I just I, I I do like full coverage. I like the idea and the effect and the work. I have some like a showpiece to display afterwards. But I'm really not fond of this kind of Not propaganda, that's too strong a word. More of what am I thinking? Anyway. I just that that, that comment that was made that they, they they don't use a pattern maker, they with computer assistance, they chart by eye. It just rubbed me the wrong way. And I really wish I had the nerve to actually ask them what they meant. And then subsequently probably get kicked out of the Facebook group. But, you know. So, for right now, I'm just going to remain silent on that fact. Unless one of them, you know, finds this video. Which, I don't care. I'm sharing this openly on my video. If they want to find it and take offense to it, that's their problem. Sorry, I'm a little bit... <sighs> my... Not last nerve is a little bit strained. But I'm just... My... Fuck it meter is up to here. I just say fuck it to most anything right now. I'm sorry. In my language, I'm just... It's my blog. I swear. Get over it. Um, so yeah, that's my very unpopular stitching opinion about... Wait. Um, number 10. For reals, though, I dare you to show me your messiest back. I was looking at this earlier. It was definitely one of my UFOs. Um, I thought this one would be a lot worse. This is the, the bird bath. Uh, but it's not. See? It's pretty messy. Actually, now that I look over the screen, yeah, it's pretty messy. The problem with it is none of these stitches go the same way. <laughs> so I, I can't... I, I, I really want to finish this. Just to say that I finished the first cross stitch that I ever started, um, but I I can't. I don't know. 
the the front's too messy. It's almost unsalvageable. I I I, I can't. But then I was looking at this one. This is the one I tried to re when I tried to kick re kickstart my my joy of processing, and this one is bad. Look at that. Look at all that traveling. It's horrible. Like that is bad. What was I thinking? Carrying those yellow threads over that. Like that is just yeah, no. No, no, no. If I start this one over, at least on this one I can keep going with it because the the stitches are all going the same direction. Mostly. Are they going the same direction? Yeah, they are. That's a bonus. So those are my messiest backs, and that is the end of the For Reels tag. Thank you so much, Adele, for that tag. It was hilarious. I loved it. So um, that's all I have right now. I'm sorry, this is a little bit of a scattered video, but um, yeah. I will probably be back when I've gotten some stitchy done. That might not be until next week sometime. So until then, I hope you guys all have great stitchy weeks, and I will see you later. Bye.